You don't need black lunda for negative thought. Whatever you need negative thought, black karma is generated. So don't bring dharma, something high to the level of something small. Use this and do it well. It's a very, very secret practice. People who are here, people who are able to make it, have the karma to receive this. People who are not able to come, or last minute cancellation, is a very clear sign they do not have the karma to receive this. People who are sleepy or bored during the talk of Black Garuda, it's a clear sign many obstacles stop them from listening to something very powerful. Very clear sign. So anyone who has this practice, I offer it to you today as a gift. I offer it to you to practice. And I also offer you the authorization to pass this practice to other people with a sincere heart, with no monetary gains, without a show of pride or knowledge, sincerely to help other people. You may share this with other people and explain to them and teach them well how to do it to the best of your knowledge. Whatever happens, it can never go wrong. Whatever happens, it can never go back on you because it's a Buddha practice. The worst that can happen is nothing happens if you have the wrong motivation. That's it. Black Garuda is very, very powerful. So after you do this practice, for example, if you're going to go to a very dangerous place, or if you're going to go to a place you know it's got a lot of you know negativities or spirits or bomos or magic, or you know it's a place that's cursed or something, or like a cemetery, you know, you go to a cemetery, you come back, something follow you, you don't know, right? So before you go to these places, it's good to do this practice. If you do it daily, secretly and quietly to develop this, then when you need it, when you do it, it's quicker. It's like a friend. If you call every day and say, how are you? When you need help, you call the community. You call them once a blue moon. When you need help, they say, get lost. <laughs> I mean, BG won't tell you get lost, but you don't make the karma, so it's not easy for him to help you. So if you call BG every day, right? If you call them every single day, and you make a contact, you know, to dial the number, um, mari, chung, 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 baby, it's all right, buddy. So you dial it on your cell phone. Here's your cell phone number. Don't need battery. You dial it on your cell phone. Um, mani chung, 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 baby, so, mani chung, 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 baby, so, ha? You recite every day, you dial him. When you meet him, you say, hey, BG, I'm going to a very horrible cemetery today, and I know it's really haunted, and I don't want anything to follow me. So, uh, you know what to do, BG? No problem. If some Hantu try to get you, they're going to see a big black bird behind you, flapping its wing. So you know what happened to the Hantu? The Hantu run. And if you do this practice very well, you do millions and millions of mantras and you get a vision. Example, you get dreams of BG. In the future, you can subdue spirits. If spirits appear to you, you can actually, by the power of mantras, subdue them. They will see you as BG, or they will see BG above you, and they will kowtow to you immediately. Tibetan Rinpoche's, who have power over spirits, they have generated the deity within them. So when the spirit sees them, they don't see them as a human being, they see them as that spirit, or as that deity. When they see them as that deity, they will immediately kowtow to that Rinpoche. They are kowtowing and showing respect to the deity he has generated, they know. So if you didn't generate and you run around doing BG and you show up to the Hantus, the Hantu might jump inside of you. <laughs> so you come home, BG outside, Hantu inside. <laughs> you don't need to come see Tanram Chi because Tanram Chi himself don't know how already. <laughs> okay? So if you're humble, cannot. If you got a lot of pride, why? If you have a lot of pride, the pride opens up the karma for negative things to enter. That's it. It's very simple. So before you go to dirty places or dangerous places, if you do this practice, you do this mantra secretly and quietly, without showing off. Very, very efficacious, very powerful. I don't feel excited. I want to do this practice. Oh, oh never mind. <laughs> so next time you see Tamaramchi with wings, you know what happened. <laughs> right? I hope I get two, not one. BG will probably play a trick on me, you know, grow one wing here, one there, and all. <laughs> flapping one here, flapping there, something went wrong. Right? But with Sanrinji, anything went wrong because he's a clown. Yes, I've been voted to that clown Rinpoche, but never mind. At least I'm still a Rinpoche, but I'm a clown. Okay. So, very powerful. Any questions on BG? The next time someone got that initial, you know, BG, you'd be like, oh. Any questions on Black Garuda? Now is the time to ask. 
So that is the main mantra. You go to the next mantra. You go to page 24. The next mantra you just recite once, finish, it's okay. Om na ho, kala rakya be be. B A with the dot on top becomes A, okay? Not A. With the dot on top becomes A, like a German umla. Um kal napo kala rakya be be so so chung chung puchi zang zang cha ki demo ning chuk ning chung nyeje de ba sha la zo um pang pang tsep tsep um um so one time you know the main one is the previous one <coughs> recite it and think of it as very holy words why it is garuda's essence and power and energy in the form of words so when you recite it, recite it with folded hands, with reference. It's powerful words. It's very, very... It almost can send things to you by reciting things. Words must be very powerful. If people can curse you through words, just words and sound, words is powerful. Vice words, uh, 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 similarly, mantras have the same power. They're words, but they're not words arbitrarily formed. They're words based on the power of a certain Buddha. And that power is in the form of sound. So when you recite that sound, to you it may sound funny, but to the beings that are around you that are about to harm, when they hear it, it's like thunderstorms in your ear, they run. When you recite these silent mantras to the spirits that want to harm you, the effect is as if there's thunderstorms in their ears, and they cannot take it, they must run. They will disperse immediately. Okay? So do this quietly, do this secretly, and do this well. Why secretly? Why quietly? Not because you're doing anything wrong. To train in humility. To train in humbleness. The purpose of Tibetan Buddhism when you get to the higher practice to practice secretly is not because you're hiding something. It is because you're on the threshold of gaining powers to benefit others. So the more secret you do it, the more humble you become. The quicker you can attain these powers. The minute you show up, that's it. The minute you show up, you get the power is gone. Okay? Then after that, you go down to dedication. Due to these merits, may I quickly achieve an enlightened state of Black Garuda and lead every transmigratory being without exception to that enlightenment. However, many six sentient beings there are, may they be immediately liberated from sicknesses. May all sentient beings never experience sickness. That's it. The rest of the practice, you guys can do. I'm not going to teach you, there's nothing to teach. You guys can read it and you can recite it. Alright? It's a mantra for purification, self-explanatory. There's another meditation on page... There's another meditation on page 19. It's called the Vase Breathing Meditation. It is to increase Qi energy. It is to increase Qi energy, the life force energy within your body. It's a tantric meditation focusing on your chakras. And it focuses on two chakras in particular, the secret chakra and the navel chakra. All right? So I'm not, I wrote this down for you. And you guys can do it if you like. If you need instructions, you let me know. I will teach it again. But most people here will not do this meditation. So the people who will not do it, if I just teach it for the sake of people who will do it, it's a waste of time. All right? This is a very, very powerful meditation to be done. There's no words. You just read it and you visualize it. In order to control chi energy, to move your chakras, and to increase your chi energy, when the chi energy or the light force is increased, your immune system gets boosted up. It's another way to avoid disease. If you do this meditation daily, you do it well. You will see your body become light. You will feel your mind become light. And anything you wish to learn or grasp comes very quickly. And you will see your body become very healthy, rosy, pink, and alive. If you look at the great Kung Fu masters, if you look at the great Kung Fu masters, they're always bright. Like your father, Uncle Yap. How old is he? Seventy-seven. Mm. Uncle Yap is seventy-seven years old. Whenever you look at him, he's a Qigong master. Very great. He's always pink, always fresh, always alive. He has mastered Qi. Mastered Qi energy. 
Similar, Qi energy is not only for China, Chinese people, everybody in the whole world got Qi energy. It's how to enter it. The Buddhist practice is here. If you do this energy, if you do this simple meditation well, there are no side effects if you do it wrong or bad. There's no bad way. If you do it well, you'll see a lightness in your body, your immune system growing, your strength growing, and a clarity and cleanliness of the mind to be very clean and very focused. It's quite self-explanatory. All right? So I left that there for auspicious reasons. The main thing I want to teach all of, uh, to share with all of you is White Tara and Black Garuda. I offer this all of you to do in order to protect yourselves. And when you do it, don't think only of yourselves. Think of the other people who are suffering and dedicate the energy to other people. There are two main practices for this. Whichever you choose to do, do it well, do it sincerely. And even after the epidemic is finished, you can continue doing this because this is not just for the epidemic, it's for enlightenment. All right, any questions before I conclude? You, you all have been very, very attentive. You all have been very, very focused. Thank you. It makes it easier for a teacher to pass. If a person, there are three faults we need to avoid during a Dhamma talk. It's likened to an example of three cups. One cup is facing up, but it's contaminated. Inside is dirty. One cup is facing down. One cup is facing up, but has holes. The first one, if you pour something into it, a contaminated cup, if the person has wrong view, that the person is stubborn, that the person has a lot of pride, whatever you pour into that cup, it becomes dirty. It's like contamination, no point. Even the teaching is good, even what you pour in is good, even the cup is good. Second is the cup facing down. Refuse to listen, lazy, don't want to try, don't want to practice. So it's like a cup going down, whatever you pour, the water doesn't go in, it goes off. Third is a cup that has holes. You listen to the teaching, you like it, you understand it, you don't apply. You don't try. Out of laziness, make excuses, just don't want to. But complain, 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 complain all the time. Always complain, but don't want to do anything. How to do something? You must make the karma for things to be successful. You don't make the karma to be successful, how can you be successful? So you must make the karma by doing spiritual practice. Once you make the karma and then you do the action, definitely got result. So it's like listening to advice from people who give, hear no one charge you and you think. Hear no one ask you for money. No one say you must be uh, do labor. You don't have to do anything. All this information is totally free. And it's beneficial. It's for you, taught by Buddha out of great compassion. So if you're sick, I give you medicine, and you don't take it, but you say the doctor is good, the medicine is good. You don't take the medicine, you don't get result. You pray to the Buddha, you count out to the Buddha, you count out to the Dharma teaching, but you don't apply it to yourself. You cannot get result. Buddha cannot force his teaching into your mind stream. A doctor cannot force his medicine down your mouth. You must take the medicine. You don't take the medicine, you don't apply the Dharma, you don't get the result. So you always complain and you get nowhere. If you don't complain, you don't get anywhere. So complain, complain, complain. This cannot, that cannot, this not successful, that not successful, that not successful. This. Always have excuse, but never apply. Here's one of the methods of applying. To purify your karma, to make things successful. To do things to protect yourself, to help others. If you cannot do 10, don't complain you cannot do 10. Do one. If you cannot do five, do two. Don't always complain, I didn't get five. If you get one, be happy. Maybe your karma only one, better than nothing. Some people out there, zero, suffer so much. If you cannot get eight, be happy with three. Don't always say, if I don't get eight, I won't settle for three. If I don't get ten, I won't settle for one. I won't settle unless I get what I want. It's just laziness talk. Just laziness. So these teachings are available. It's free, it's easy. The Lim family, Madam Lim, Ruby's parents, uh, Ruby's mother, has offered this place for us to use for Dharma talk. The Dharma teaching has been sponsored. Been printed for free. Sponsored by someone. I have studied 20 years under my masters through a lot of hardship and difficulty in India and in America, serving my gurus to get this knowledge. You have made a lot of effort to drive here. You have a, most of you have worked all day and are very tired and are sitting here listening to the teachings. Somehow we all have the karma and affinity to be here together to listen to something very holy. I'm not holy, but what I'm telling you is holy. It doesn't make me holy. I'm not telling you I'm holy. 
You're not here to see me. You're not here to see how good or holy I am. You're here to listen to knowledge that is holy and excellent. It's holy because it can bring you benefit. Anything that brings you benefit is holy. So some of you are from faraway countries. Some of you are nearby. Some of you from another town. Some of you work all day. Some of you had to fight the traffic jam to get here. You all made very great effort to be here. You made very great effort to listen to Dharma. Attentively, you have karma. Don't waste this opportunity. You have collected the causes to get all this now, and you received it. I have offered to you sincerely from my heart with the pure motivation that you will get benefit from this. Everything is here, everything is free, everything is provided. Now, it's, I'm giving you it on a golden platter. Please use the platter and do it. I don't say you are complaining, but in general, stop complaining. It's a general advice. And apply the methods that's been taught. If you need a hundred methods, never mind, slowly can, but whatever you got now, apply it. If you have some suffering or problem or difficulty in your life, realize that it is your karma. Don't burden and complain to people around you consistently and constantly. Find the ways to purify the karma to stop your own suffering and apply the Dharma. Don't make the Dharma beautiful to listen to, wonderful to recite mantra. The Dharma, don't reduce it and deduce it down just to reciting mantras. Apply the teachings to your life. Only reciting the mantra and only going to temple and offering incense will not alleviate your karma. It will collect a little bit of merit for you. Go away from superstitious Buddhistic practice. Go to knowledge and wisdom and logic and do something substantial. This is a substantial sadhana. This is a substantial practice. It is not a little here, a little there, a little there, a little here, put together. It is something from A to Z, complete, substantial, from a correct lineage, with no fault. All you have to do is apply it and practice it. And you get the result. Protection, increase of wisdom. And you may think, well, what's the big deal? It is a big deal. If you gain these qualities in your mind of wisdom, let's say there's 10 steps to wisdom and you gain 3 steps. Before this, you only had 0 steps. You gain 3 steps. When you die, you take those 3 steps with you because it's the mind that reincarnates into the new body. In your new body, you start out with 3. Everybody still starts out at 0 or 1. So if you gain 7, there you are. You take it with you. You don't leave it behind. Material possessions and money and friends and, and all these things around you are left behind. You can use those and have those. Don't be attached and concentrated on those. Don't be concentrated and attached to people, things, material objects, money, clothes, whatever. Be attached to your mind and how it can develop. That is the only thing that will be taken with you at the time of death. Everything else is left behind. If you can take, if you can take this piece of gold and you cannot take this piece of gold, you cannot, you cannot take this, it's not yours to take, you can take this. Wouldn't it be stupid to put this in a safe and, and keep it locked and check on it every day? You cannot keep it. Wouldn't it be smarter to put this one inside the safe and this one just whatever left? Similarly, your body, your friends, your kids, your parents, whatever, you have to leave them behind. Love them, take care of them, do what you can. Do not be attached. Do not be attached doesn't mean a cold, I don't care attitude. It means to realize, do not be attached, it means to realize that one day you have to let go. That time will come. You do what you can. When it comes, realize it. Don't make other people suffer. That is the truth. But things that you have to take with you and develop is your mind. Your mind goes with you and you have to travel to the next level of that. And whatever negative things you do, that karma will be attached to your mind. And whatever positive things you do will be attached to the mind, and that goes with you. And the mind, and whether it creates positive or negative, is based on knowledge. And that knowledge comes from Dharma in this case. On what afflicts the mind, what makes the mind good. That is Dharma. If we apply it and we practice it, we can transform our mind. If we can transform our mind, we can transform our body and our actions. That is what we're going to take, and that's the karma we're going to take with us. It's more logical to focus on something we're going to keep long term than to focus on something we cannot. So if you've been chasing after money, 
fame, glory, looks, body, appearance. It's okay, but don't chase only after that and spend 100% of your precious human time and life only on that. Why? Because you can't take it with you and it's short-lived. That's why. Yes, make a living. Yes, have partners. Yes, have fun, enjoy. But you must apply Dharma practice. You must transform the mind. You must make the mind higher in its level. That is what you're going to take with you. It's very logical. Take and develop. So if you only chase after money, you only chase after fame, wealth, whatever. If you have been doing that, look at yourself now. You got it. So, are you happy? Are you not going to die because you have it? Are you any better because you have it? Or you have seen it as senseless, useless, you need it, but it's just something to use already, but nothing more. Think about that. Think about all this. This is not a lecture. This is not a scolding. This is pure Buddha's teaching of truth for all of you with intelligence to contemplate and think. And if it's acceptable and it's good, apply it. If it's not, nothing bad happens to you because you didn't listen to Buddha or me. No. There's no threat here. And if you do listen, I cannot promise you heaven and salvation either. I can't bribe you or I can't punish you. Neither can Buddha. But definitely, if you listen, there are going to be self-benefits and benefits for others. If you don't listen, if sufferings come, don't complain. If you don't listen to the virtuous way and correct conduct and activity, and you don't listen to correct advice on any level, when the sufferings come, be ready. So if you're going to harm others, if you're going to hurt others through anger, if you're going to steal from others, be prepared to be harmed back, be prepared for poverty. If you're going to trick others, be prepared to be tricked. So if you want that, and you don't mind it, go ahead and do it. If you don't want it, don't do it. And whatever you do gets multiplied. The karma multiplies daily. It's very logical. Wonderful. Any last questions? <coughs> yes? How do we must? <coughs> Oh, you can do it before your sadhana, after, anytime. So let's say you have to do Lama Tsong Kaba and Buddha Shakyamuni every day. You add Tara to it, or you add Buddha to it. So you finish the other two, you just do it. Okay? It's like if I give you a bao bread, and I give you some rice, how to eat? You eat one at a time when you finish, and then I give you maybe a, a banana. How do I eat it? You eat it after you finish, the other two. <laughs> okay? Serious. You finish when you finish. If you got a big mouth for all three of them. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? Okay. Oh, yes, yes. If your visualization is not good. Oh, very good question. If your visualization is not good, you try your best and you, and although you try to visualize Black Garuda, the only thing that appears is maybe, you know, haagen ice cream. <laughs> If you attempt and you make your attempt, Black Garuda or Buddha will bless you through your attempt. Don't think they're so narrow-minded. And they realize that our visualization of power. At first, it's always like that. Every time I close up my eyes, I don't see Tara. What I see is astral remote. <laughs> yes. Every time I do meditation, I think about my wonderful pillow. Because it's slow and it's especially made for my neck so I don't get a neck pain. Yes. So if your visualization is not good, Never mind. Have a good motivation and try to make it better slowly. Because if you can focus and make it better, you're training your mind on concentration. You can apply that to anything in life. You're training your mind. Don't let it control you. You control it. Good question. But no adverse reactions or negative reactions can come from this or any Buddhist practice that you might do wrong. Okay? In inverted commas. The Buddha is extremely compassionate. None of his teachings can be harm for you. He doesn't have that type of motivation. Okay? Yeah? If instead of going through all the preliminaries, can we just go straight to the mantra? Sure. No, uh, no. You cannot go straight to the mantra. You have to do the sadhana. Example, if it's white tara, you have to start from this page and end at white tara page. You can skip this front part, yes. 
No, no. Taking refuge is not a preliminary in itself. It's part of the practice. It's part of the practice. So if you're going to do white dara, you start at white dara and you end at white dara. If you're going to do black dara, you start at black dara end. Once you finish the prescribed prayer, let's say that it starts here and it finishes here, right? Let's say it finishes here. Once you finish that, you finish for the day. Besides that, if you're just sitting around watching TV or you're bored, you want to recite the mantra, you can. Skipping this and just doing the mantra not effective. If you do this and then extra, you want to do mantra on its own, yes. Understand? That means when you continue with it, you just that's no, when you finish the three pages uh -huh. and you're free, maybe in the evening you want to do some more. You don't have to do the three pages yet, you just do the mantra. Yeah. If you want to start a new practice that you do from the first page to the... Daily, yes, once. And do you need to uh, recite at the same time or something like that? Is, that's what you do in the afternoon, you must do in the afternoon at the same time. Oh, no, 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 no. Time. Sometimes you do morning, next day you can do afternoon, next day you can do evening, next day you can do afternoon, you can any time. Any time. And face any direction, sit anywhere, except toilet. No joke, except toilet. Anywhere, even bedroom can. No problem. Questions? When you chant the mantra as an additional to the sadhyas, do you need to visualize that no problem? If you chant the mantra as an additional, you don't visualize, it's no problem. It's during the sauna you visualize. Good question. Because I, sometimes I try. Oh no, don't visualize when you're driving. <laughs> No, don't visualize while you're driving. I didn't tell them to visualize while driving. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Any questions, anyone? Please keep in this mind, in case questions arise later, you cannot go wrong with this practice. You cannot do it wrong. You cannot recite it wrong. You cannot. Don't be worried. Don't think if I did it wrong, I won't get the result. Buddha is not so narrow-minded. Okay, yes. Page 24. Yes, of course. The long one, right? Okay, please listen up. This one you just recite once at the conclusion of the main mantra. Nako. Kala. Rakya. Be be. So so. Chung chung. Puchi, Shang, Zang Zang, Chaki, Termo, Ning Chung, Nyeje, Dupe, Shala Zo, Hong Kong, Hong Kong, Zer, 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 you know, maybe some of you recite from Namo Chojang to Tao Chojang, some of you will pop, 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 pop. Never mind. If you stop near it, Black Guru, they hear you, you come. You hear wings. Alright, you hear wings. So, don't worry. If you hear the flapping of wings, that means it's not a Pantiana, it's BG. <laughs> recite this letter about wing sound, it's not Pantiana, it's BG. Okay? I want to thank all of you so much for coming and listening to the Dharma talk. I want to thank you all, all of you so much um, um, for practicing and to make such an effort. It's really, really wonderful and I rejoice all of you. We'll do a dedication, all right? Dedication means we dedicate the energy of this practice that all beings may benefit and may this epidemic come to cease and may the great doctors, we pray we get a cure ASAP. We send the energy of this teaching to the doctors to find the cure ASAP for those people. All right? Think like that very carefully. The dedication is very nice. Each one. Page 17 is a dedication. Short and easy and nice. Everybody, please read along. May the precious body mind, where does not want our life to grow, may that born have no decline to increase in whatever grow. May the precious emptiness, where it is not born, arise and grow. May that born have no decline or increase for the world. May this spirit be humiliated by myself and others, and it should be served all human beings and with the Dhamma, and especially may the essential teachings of the primary master, Tongkapa, become clear and free. 
In all my rebirths, may I not be parted from perfect gurus, let me enjoy abundance of Dhamma, perfecting the qualities of the stages of paths, may I quickly attain the rank of Ajatara Buddha. By this virtue, may I quickly realize Guru Buddha and transfer each sympathy of being into that divine state. May all conditions and conditions arise, and may all obstacles be pacified in order to increase the infinity of doctrine of the spiritual kings on Dhamma. May the merits of the three times place forever. At dawn, dusk, at night, or midday, may the three jewels grant us their blessings. May they help us to achieve all realizations and strengthen the path of our lives with various signs of auspiciousness. May the brightness of the teachings of Lama Tsongkhapa continue to dissipate the veil of darkness covering the beings of three flowers. In this holy land surrounded by snow mountains, you are the source of all benefit and happiness. May your lotus be the power of Christianity and Tenzin Council remain in this world until the end of existence. Someone in here, after they do the practice of our Garuda, will have an excellent dream. Write that dream down. Do not reveal it to others and send it to me. Somebody wants to do mantra, you know, 
Okay, everybody, I think knows Setrap is a fierce Amitabha. Anybody want? Because I have plenty. Who want? Raise your hand. <laughs> Anybody need? Okay, like this. Anybody need you to help yourself? Easy. Oh, maybe I, I do a prayer first. This one already prayed. Don't worry. <laughs> Keep it well, it's very holy out. Mm -hmm. Who wants to raise your hand? Oh, okay. Okay. Set up, his name is Setra. Yeah, you pass it on. It's